the Joe Rogan experience. You know, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, Michael, is there's an article today in The Atlantic, which is really interesting. It's about technology. Um, it's uh, contact tracking technology. And this, there's a real concern about this stuff. First of all, the idea is great that if you that this could free America from quarantine. So this is always the risk, right? The risk is just give up a little bit of your civil liberties, give up a little bit of your freedom, and uh, we're going to keep you safe. And you know, it brings you to the old Benjamin Franklin quote: "You know, he who would give up liberty for freedom deserves neither, neither, yeah, or yeah. Li- li- liberty for safety." Um, I, I'm sure I fucked up that quote, but this this technology <laughs> is very interesting because they're using it in South Korea and they're using it in Singapore. And I, I the the title of the uh, article in the Atlantic is the technology that could free America from quarantine, and it's out today. And um, they bring up this conundrum. I mean, nobody wants to give up civil liberties, and civil liberties lost or rarely regained. And this is the real concern here, that if you do allow people to track who you're in contact with and make sure that, okay, you're testing negative and you're in contact with people that also test negative, so you're okay. You're, you're okay to travel now. Like, this is, yeah. this is a very weird thing, and it gets us yeah. into a very gray area. How do you feel about this? Uh, I feel about it this way. I, I, I'm, in general, I, I'm against that sort of thing. I like the idea of privacy um, and that I do have a right to, to not be tracked. And, uh, you know, you can't have cameras in my home or my yard and, and so on. In general, I think across the board, that's a good principle uh, and, and it follows the Constitution. I think there are times, say, national emergency like this, of course, there's always the risk that, you know, any autocrat can de- declare a national emergency, grab the power, and never give it back. And I, I mentioned examples of this before in Turkey, say. Uh, but the difference here, I think, is, you know, we do have a constitution. We do have states' rights. We do have courts that litigate these sorts of things. I could see a reasonable measure being taken for, let's say, we're going to do the following for six months until we see what happens with this pandemic. And then once that's over, then we're going to revert back. Now, let's say the governor or the, or the president says, well, I'm not going back. Well, then you have courts then we, and, you, and you sue the state or you sue the federal government for violations of civil liberties and then you can get them back. Right, but so that's never that. happened. We've never got them back. Like, what happened with the NSA when Edward Snowden re- revealed how much tracking is actually going on? I mean, that's never been yeah, reversed. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. It was very. Di- I watched that show you had, when you had him on, and and oh boy, that was pretty disturbing. Very disturbing. Um, and what was also disturbing was that now it's been proven that the Obama administration lied. They yeah. lied about what you know. He's like just metadata. There's no no concern. That it was not just right. metadata. They were they were able to read people's emails, right? Yes, and you know these this program was started under Bush, and so supposedly when Obama uh, became president, it's like you know the the transparent president. So we're gonna we're gonna stop doing that. Well, that that's not the case. So here's a good argument for you know WikiLeaks and and the Pentagon Papers that I I, I recognize as valuable that we wouldn't have known that without. Uh, Snowden uh, or the uh, or the Pentagon Papers, and, and uh, you know it's good to know what uh, you know what your government is up to, and yeah. you know in our our mutual favorite subjects of conspiracy theories, you know we didn't know about a lot of the things Kennedy was doing and Johnson, you know and, uh, all the way back to Eisenhower lying about the Vietnam War, for example, until the Pentagon Papers came out, and then in the 90s the Church Committee on Conspiracies from the 70s, a, a lot of those documents were. Released and there was that 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 business about the uh, Operation Northwoods, mm-hmm. where Kennedy administration people brought to him this idea of a false flag operation over Cuba, make it look like um, the the Russians were uh, harassing our aircraft or our airports as an excuse to invading Cuba or assassinating Castro and so on. It's like, you know, like when you had Alex Jones on, he talks about false flag operations, and most of us skeptics go, "Oh, that's a bunch of nonsense." And then you re- you read this these documents that are revealed in the in, in these um, re- released. Do- secret documents like wow okay so we did do that not just that then, signed by the joint chiefs of staff vetoed yeah, by kennedy yeah. was like what the hell are you doing you know and then finds himself dead less than a year later right 
Yeah, and then all the shenanigans of um, American intelligent agents um, manipulating elections in South American uh, yeah. democracies, in, in the in the model of well, he may be a son of a bitch, but he's our son of a bitch. Yeah, right. So we, we'd rather su- we would rather support the fascist dictator rather than the communist dictator. It's like wh- what are we doing doing that anyway? Right. Well, that's what we do. It's like wait a minute, uh, does the public know about this? Did Congress approve this? No. Okay, so you know this is one reason people believe conspiracy theories is because a lot of them are true. 